What is up everyone, this is Edward Stinger from Videoplasty.com and in this video tutorial for beginners you will learn how to use what I think is one of the best free video editing software for Windows. It's called VSDC Free Video Editor. And it's not only free, but it also doesn't add any watermark on your videos, doesn't limit your export quality, and doesn't have any trial periods either. And what's really interesting, VSDC is officially recommended by the GoPro team as a free non-linear video editing tool for Windows, and it also gained popularity among drone racers and gamers. So all in all, an amazing free video editing software. Now let's switch to my computer and start this tutorial. To install VSDC Video Editor, go to their website and download the software, link in the description. They have a free version of the video editor available, but you can also get VSDC Pro for only $20. To access more advanced features such as hardware acceleration, masking, chroma key, and more advanced pro editing settings. When you open VSDC, you will see a couple of articles and tutorials here on the bottom, a list of recent projects saved here on the right, and a few options to start a new project right here. VSDC has a few interesting features such as doing a screen capture. To do that, click this button here. You'll see a couple of settings and presets. If you do a screen recording, I suggest you go with 30 frames per second. On the bottom, you will find hotkeys to start, pause, and end the recording. VSDC also allows you to easily create a slideshow from images by clicking this button. Accept all settings by default. Here, you can select a transition type that you can preview on the right. Next, you have to drag and drop your images into the timeline and arrange them in order. Then, apply settings. But, in most cases, you will want to start a blank project. For the settings, give your project a title. For resolution, in most cases, you will be fine with full HD or 4K resolution in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. For frame rate, you can lift this to 30 frames per second or change to anything else if your footage has a different frame rate. Leave everything else as it is by default. Once opened, VSDC might look a bit intimidating because it has a lot of features, but it's actually not that hard to get used to. On the top, we have a bar with different tabs that looks just like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. On the left, we have the Project Explorer with the list of scenes. In the middle, we have a video preview of our edit. Don't worry about all the buttons around this area. They are here for easy access, but can also be found on the top menu. On the bottom is the timeline, where all the video editing happens. And on the right, we have Properties window, and another panel with basic effects. The way VSDC works is that each project has multiple scenes and each scene can have multiple clips. For this project, we'll just use one scene. To import media, go to Editor, Add Object, and select whether you want an image, audio, or video. Alternatively, you can also have the files available in a folder and simply drag and drop them to import. Now, let's do some basic editing. The timeline works with different tracks. Each clip on the timeline will have a thumbnail to see what is what. You can also resize each track to see them better. Depending on the duration of your edit, you might want to zoom in or zoom out of your timeline to see all your clips better you can see the time codes here on the top of the timeline. The red line with a green head is called a playhead and can be moved around the timeline to different points in time. To play your timeline, click the red play button or the space bar. It will start playing from the playhead. If you're having issues with your video preview lagging, you can use this drop down menu to change the quality level to something lower. You can grab a clip and move it around to place it later or earlier in your edit. 
You can also trim a clip by clicking and dragging at the end of it. Keep in mind, this will remove that portion of the clip from the edit, both video and audio. You can also drag the other way to extend it, but it will only freeze on the last frame without audio. If you have clips on top of each other on different tracks on the timeline, the one on top has priority and can be seen. Of course, if you resize the one on top, it will reveal what's on the layer underneath it. The track order can be changed by going to the Edit tab and clicking the up and down arrows. You can also disable and hide the layer by clicking the eye icon right here. To enable it back, just click on it again. You can also lock a layer by clicking here. This way, you won't be able to make any changes to it, which makes it easier when you want to work with other clips around it so you don't accidentally select it. To correct a mistake and go back, you can click Ctrl Z to undo. As you already saw, clips can also be edited directly in the preview area. For example, you can click and move a clip around. If you grab it at the edges, you can resize it. To rotate it, grab it at one of the corners when the cursor turns to this rounded arrow. You can also crop a video by going to the editor and clicking crop. Then select the area you want to keep and click OK. Another useful tool is split. You can find it in the editor tab. If you have a clip selected on the timeline and click split, it will separate it into two different clips at the playhead so you can work on them separately. With a clip selected, you can control some more advanced properties here on the properties window. For example, on a video, you can adjust the speed of the clip to create a slow motion or fast forward effect. This will also adjust its duration on the timeline, so at 50% the speed, it will take double the time. For audio, for example, you can control the volume to make it louder. Further to the right, you have the basic effects window where you can do color correction and color grading by adjusting brightness, contrast, RGB colors, saturation, or tone curve. You can also add a transition at the beginning or end of a clip. Go to Editor, Video Effect, Transition, and select from the ones available. It will ask you where you want to position it, so we'll just select at the end of the clip. Do this again to add another transition, but this time at the beginning of the clip. You can then edit the transition like a clip inside the current clip. When done, click on the scene to go back to the initial timeline. When you finish editing your video and are ready to export, you can do that on the top bar under Export Project. Here you will see a few different options depending on the device you're exporting for. And for each device there will be some different output video formats as presets. If you're just starting out, I suggest to export your videos for web, then select 2 MP4. Under Output Files, you can select a location where to save the video on your computer. For more compression settings, you can edit profile and change some settings manually. But this is pretty advanced territory here, so I suggest you just go with one of the presets from earlier. To start the export process, click the red button on the top right that says Export Project. Depending on your project and computer, this might take a while to process, which is normal. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, it would be great if you could gently tap the like button and leave a comment to let me know what you think. Or if you don't know what to say, just write a hashtag Videoplasty. It really helps with a YouTube algorithm. For amazing stock animation, which works great in VSDC Video Editor, that you can use in your creative projects with drag and drop simplicity to create stunning and professional animations in minutes, 
make sure to visit videoplasty.com. And if you're interested in more useful content in the world of video editing, video animation, and starting and growing a YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. I'm Edward Stinger from videoplasty.com. Follow me on Instagram as well at Edward Stinger to keep up with what I'm doing and say hi. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.